FBI shows up on Friday night to your journalist homes, mm-hmm. Saturday morning to your homes. Is that right? They, they showed up on Thursday, November 3rd to our reporter homes, and then on Saturday morning at 6 a.m. to to my apartment. I sort of came to at 6 a.m. I heard I heard it sort of you know, a, a, a very heavy pounding knock. And it occurred to me, okay, the authorities must be at my door. And, and the first thought that occurred to me was, how long have they been pounding on my door before they break it down? Because they give you a courtesy knock, and then they're going to use the battering ram. And then I go to open the door, and then I sort of think, well, this is kind of a dangerous, scary moment, because if I swing the door open, are they going to shoot me? I don't know what's going on. So I open the door, and there's 10 or 12 uh, federal agents in blue jackets with big wh- white lights, kind of the ones that are shining on me, so I can't really see them fully. They spin me around, they put me in handcuffs, and they sort of throw me up against the hallway outside my apartment. And the first thing I'm thinking is, is this standard operating procedure? What What is this? Um, eventually, they bring me back into my apartment, and, and then I'm sitting down in handcuffs, and I say, I'd like to speak to my lawyer. They say, would you like to use the phone that's sitting on your nightstand? And I said, well, yes, that's that's where my number in my phone is. As soon as I'm done finishing that call, they snatch the phone out of my hand, thus giving them access to my phone because it, I'd entered my password. So it was basically, a, I, I guess, a ruse in order for them to have access wow. to my phone. So it's conceivable that if you wouldn't have made that call, they might not have access to your phone. It's conceivable. What happens after that? You're they your... take the phone. They say, are you going to behave yourself, et cetera? I, I'm paraphrasing these agents. There were about 10 or 12 of them. All wearing masks. Probably. Westchester County. They had they had a, 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 a vest on. It said FBI, jackets, FBI. And finally, you know, they do this, search my home for two hours. I have a, you know, two-bedroom apartment. And they would move me into the, uh, one room and search the other room so I couldn't see what they were doing. Is that they, legal? Charlie, this whole, th- this whole thing is illegal. The whole premise is illegal. So this happens. And finally, I'm sitting on my bed. They've searched the whole place for two hours, taking stuff. And, and this lead agent, Tony, says, you have any questions? And I almost said this, Charlie. I did not say this because... Experience has taught me don't speak to federal agents without an attorney present. I guess he could hear me say it even though I didn't mouth the words. And I said, you ever raid a reporter's home before, Tony? They, they come into my home and finally they show me this, this search warrant and the warrant lists a series of possible crimes that either I may have committed or I know somebody else has committed. And the crimes are – this is wild. It says – Misprison of a felony. None of you know what that means, and I didn't know what it I meant don't know either what until means. I talked to the people on my team. Apparently, it's that you like sort of knew that a crime has been committed and you didn't do anything about it, which is it's a we, bystander law. It's a it's a bystander law, which is yeah, never very hard to prosecute. Which has those. never been prosecuted. I was going to say, yeah. Number two, accessory after the fact. That's so you, preposterous. Do you know why they created these laws for the mob? But but these they, they created these because they couldn't get but, them on but, anything but, but else. Journalism, of course. At I mean, the Washington yeah. Post, if you're a national security reporter and you get a secretly leaked illegal document given to you by a third party, do you know what it's called, Charlie? When when the Washington Post or the New York Times publishes a document Sources. that someone else illegally obtained, it's called a Tuesday and a Thursday. The New York Times does another hit piece and they say documents show how far. Project Veritas deceptive reporting tactics can go before running afoul of the federal law. What a way to word that. Documents show how far they could go before running afoul. Do you know another way to say that? We We check with lawyers to make sure everything we did was legal. (laughs) <laughs> but do you see how they worded it? Yeah, of course. I know. I read the they, same article. They use, they use language in a manipulative – they use they use innuendo and supposition to make some – it's almost like you have to twist it. You have to, you have to put it through a filter to understand what they're actually reporting. Do you, uh, do you regret not moving Veritas out of New York? Listen, this is an issue that divides a lot of people that work for me, and I, I am very conflicted about it, Charlie, because I'm from the, 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 the Hudson Valley. I'm from the, um, I was Bur- from Chicago. Burning- I was from Chicago. I got out for this exact reason. I know, but – but and, and and there's something to be said for getting out. But I just want to give you both sides. I I'm not a person who runs away from from the fight. I I'm not a person who who backs down, cows down, runs away because maybe I reject the premise that this country is headed to a place where that's what we must do. And maybe I'm a person who rather die on my feet than live on my knees. And maybe I'm a person who. I'm fighting these battles with the New York State Supreme Court, special masters in the Southern District. I'm fighting in places where, I, where I'm fighting for principles in those places, and I think it's my imperative to do so. 
So I'm conflicted. And by the way, home is where the heart is. I grew up in, you know, Bergen County, New Jersey, and Rockland County, New York. So that's where I'm from. I hear you. It's just um, it puts you in a in a different, whole different legal world. You know that. I understand. NRA, NRA went through the exact same thing. Right. And, and, I, and I get it. But like I actually do think that Veritas is so clean and so ethical that if they want to put me in jail for doing my job, I say let them. OK. Um, how are you hanging up, holding up with all this? I'm doing I'm doing great. I have a great team, many of whom are here. I know you like to call them the entourage. They are. Oh, James, uh, come on, look. It's a football stadium. Last time you gave me a hard time, you know? I did give you, you a did, hard time. You like to give me a hard time yeah, sometimes. 